What's up, everybody? We have 10 minutes here. Nick Loffenberg is across the table from Mark and I, and we're going to talk about custom ballistic turrets. Um, and this is a topic that we get a lot of questions on, uh, not even necessarily for podcasts, but we just get people calling in for this all the time, asking where they should go to get custom turrets, and then just asking about the topic in general, because maybe it's something you've heard about and you're unfamiliar with it, or just the, the idea of changing your turret, why would you even do that? So, um, Nick, since you are the pro in this case to talk about it, um, if you were to give somebody just the basic rundown, maybe they haven't heard of it before, or sure. they have, and they're curious about why someone would do it, hey. how it's done, maybe you can jump into well, that first. Uh, yeah, let's define, I mean, what is a custom ballistic turret? Yes. Sure. Uh, so the first thing to consider is you know the rifle scope. Um, some rifle scopes have a, have a cap turret system. Some of them have an exposed target style turret system where you actually dial in the range based on MOA or milliradian. Um, what a custom BDC turret is, is rather than dialing a specific amount of minutes of angle or milliradians, you're actually dialing to a range specified on the turret. Mm-hmm. Um, it is really fast. It's very popular in hunting crowds. We get people call constantly and ask us, hey, how come you guys don't have one? What's the, you know, do you use one, all this? And, and the fact of the matter is a lot of us actually use them. We don't do them ourselves because we're all very ethical hunters here. And <clears throat> we do want to um, always make sure that whatever products we're using, we can really help somebody on the phone. If they're having an issue, they want to be able to call into Vortex and say, hey, you know, how do you use this? What's the reason why this might not be working for me? And um, a lot of people just don't fully understand the limitations of a custom turret system where, you know, if you have that knowledge, they're really handy. Mm-hmm. But if you and don't, it, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think it's like you can most certainly be an extremely ethical hunter with, sure. you know, oh, yeah. a custom yeah. Turret, but like you just said, you got to identify the limitations as well. Correct. It's not magic. Right. Absolutely. Right. Which some of those limitations are that when you dial a turret, every time you get a click, it will have a MRAD or mil radian, like Nick was saying. It will have an MRAD value to it. It's usually 0.1 mils, or it could be something else. Or it'll have an MOA value to it. A lot of times you'll see quarter minute or half minute or something along those lines. Um, so it will have a value to it. But rather than, you know, if you're out in the field, let's say, and um, you see a deer come out at 300 yards, rather than having to memorize, oh, how many MOA was that, you just dial your turret to the point where you have laser engraved a spot at the exact amount of MOA or MRAD that you would have dialed in for 300 yards, but instead of it saying, you know, like, uh, I don't know, whatever you dial in. 10 MOA. Yeah, depending on your cartridge, all these things, right, in yardage. But instead of dialing that in, you just dial to the three for 300. Mm -hmm. And you just, like, boom, I already know that. I don't have to go into a ballistics calculator, whatever. Range range 300, dial to 300. Dial to 300, right. So, yeah, your your turret would, in a sense, almost match your your range finder's yardage. But the limitations come into play from what I've gathered. Um, Just being a Nick, you can speak to this more, too, but from what I've gathered... What I would dial in, you know, let's say a uh, cold 30-degree day in Wisconsin at 900 feet of elevation to shoot at 350 yards, for example, isn't the same as what I would dial in Wyoming at, I don't know, 10,000 feet or whatever. I'm, I'm pulling numbers out of my butt yeah, totally. Sure. But at 80 degrees. At 80 degrees, right. And so that isn't the same thing that I dial at 350 yards there. And um, so in that case, you find yourself, if you were to make a custom turret for one specific place and one specific condition and one specific um, round that you're shooting, so you're, you know, you're not changing the projectile either, all that stuff, as soon as you start changing things, a custom turret that you put on there could start to become inaccurate. Yes, that's correct. Uh, as atmospheric conditions change, um, humidity is not a big factor. Um, it does. It is one of the three. Um, one of the three factors that does make up density altitude, which is we can go into in a little bit more. But um, that one doesn't matter so much. But temperature and barometric pressure does change your point of impact downrange, and it can change it pretty dramatically depending on the cartridge you're using and. Um, and uh, where you're at on planet Earth. So if you are, just a good example, uh, the last time I went out west, I had taken a 308, and 
back home. They still use those, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah, as my okay. friend Isaiah Kurz would call it, the Lord's cartridge. Were you in uh, <laughs> in your in your buckskins? <laughs> no, I think that was one of those uh, primitive weapon hunts. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so um, back at home, though, at uh, just around sea level, um, my bullet was going uh, was hitting. Uh, subsonic at about 1,100 yards. Okay. So that's when it was actually going, crossing over and going to a subsonic range, dropping below the sound barrier. Um, where I was at in Wyoming, it didn't go subsonic until about 1,300 yards. So well, I was. That's a big change. Yes. Big change, yeah. And that had to do with elevation and temperature, maybe a little bit of humidity changes, but not not big. But mm-hmm. that, you know, that type of, you know, I see people with a ballistic turret that goes out that far. Um, and that I think is a huge limitation because if they ever think that they're going to shoot an animal at that range, um, just going from maybe they get up in the morning and they have their, the temperature outside is 30 degrees Fahrenheit and they go out, you know, and it's, you know, it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit in the afternoon at that range, that's going to throw your point of impact off quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Are, are there some good rules of thumb? Like when you're maybe taking some of these things into account and going, well, I want this turret to, if I am going to go the route of getting, you know, a custom ballistic turret, mm-hmm. I want this to be as accurate as possible, and I want it to be as uh, as versatile as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so a lot of people like to have multiple uh, ballistic turrets made, for one. Um, okay, sure. So you can mm-hmm. actually have a ballistic turret made and put the density altitude for that turret on there. Yeah. And you can have, you know, four or five turrets made at, you know, increments of maybe 1,500 feet of density altitude. Possibly then, even if you're shooting a different projectile. Sure. I'd have yeah. to imagine because that will change certain Oh, yes, things. very much. Boy. Yeah, so, like, the way I do it, and I do it in a very odd way, but I take a piece of tape, wrap it around the turret, and the morning of my hunt, I put in uh, the temperature that is today and then what I expect to be in the afternoon, pick up a, a middle ground, and then I'll actually run a ballistic calculation off my Kestrel and write on there physically for that day what my drops are. And then I do that out to 500 yards because, I, again, I'm a very ethical hunter, and I always want to make sure that if I fire on an animal that it's going to go down quickly. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to ever go past that point, even though I feel very proficient past that point. You know, I feel like if I'm more than 500 yards away, I can always get a little closer. <laughs> so why not? That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's one thing that I was wondering, too. Is there kind of like a... Um, like, like we're kind of t- talking about maybe some of the limitations of the system. Um, is there kind of a, a general, a general, let's talk maybe, you know, like your, your common, your more common hunting cartridges, mm-hmm. you know, that bracket of hunting cartridges. Is there um, kind of like a, a distance where some of these variables that you're taking into consideration and accounting for when you're getting this, this ballistic turret made, um, they become, I guess, less critical. You know, right. like like, at, like a, at a closer range, for example, the amount of deviation from, let's say, the information you got at home, for example, isn't enough to be super problematic. Yeah, yeah. like like you just brought up five hundred yards. Is is it kind of six hundred yards and in? Is it five hundred yards and in where you're going to kind of get a, not get away with, but it's just not going to be as Big deal. It's going to be very cartridge specific. However, okay. you know, mm-hmm. for the guys shooting a six five Creedmoor, three oh eight, uh, two seventy, whatever, um, anywhere in there, I, I guess I personally would say keep it under six hundred yards. Yeah, um, and that's for two reasons: is being ethical, and also just the limitations of the cartridge. Um, you can. A, a good way to do it for you, if you ever want to know on your own system is pull up your ballistic calculator. And have the spit out your ballistic data in both your increments that are in your turret. So if you're using MOA, use MOA, mil, use mil, but also have it read out in inches. Okay. And know the size of the vital area of that animal. So if you have an animal that has, let's say, an eight inch tall vital, an eight inch wide vital, I can divide that in half. I got four inches from center to the bottom or four inches from center to the top. And then I can look at my ballistic calculator and then go back in and change my density altitude by a thousand feet at a time and actually see, okay, at what range does yeah. do oh, I see that four inches of change? And that is now I'm outside of the sweet spot. It's an inappropriate range to fire on that animal if you don't have a perfect like if you're not dialing based on your atmosphere conditions. Right. Like yeah. at that moment. Right. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, you yeah. kind of create these mock scenarios and go, okay, this is this is my sweet spot. This is yeah. what I'm good out to. And and then and that's really good to know, right? If you're gonna yeah. go that route, man, you go into that hunt, you don't get to a point and go, 
you know, 600 yards, like, yee, I don't know. You're like, no, I know. Like, I got to get closer right. or yeah. nope, I'm good at six. Reminds me of being in college and being like, what's the worst grade I can get on this final <laughs> that actually still pass? Uh, <laughs> I once had, I once had, which I think if you had three finals on the same day, you could request to have it rescheduled. But I had all my finals, like it was like Monday of finals week. And I think I only had three finals or maybe I had one on Tuesday. Whatever it was, I was like, if I if I don't uh, if I take all these tests on the same day, then I basically get an extra week of summer. So I, I took <laughs> I took all three tests, and nice. God, I got a I got a B instead of an A in a class because of it, Jim. Because I was like, That's I don't okay. have to study as much for this one. You're still here. You're still, I'm still, here. still here. We made it. All right, and this is a ten minute talk still, so we got to keep. My going. God, but all well, right, cut. So Ryan, here's cut that here's out. <laughs> <laughs> here's one of the things that I just think you know in, in terms of like talking with people about this. As we've mentioned, there's there's nothing. There's nothing wrong or, you know, when we're talking about the ethics of hunting and stuff, there's nothing Mm -hmm. wrong with just actually doing something like this. If you really think about it, this is that on previous engagements. This is dope. This is what snipers and shooters have been doing forever is trying to find um, quick ways to be able to know what distance a target is at at, and either have it memorized. Like we were just talking with Tony Paul skill, you know, about being a sniper and just Mm -hmm. he knows right off the top of his head with his gun. He's so familiar with it. If he sees a target at 500 yards, he's down 3.2. Like, boom. That's it. Just a given. Or, you know, some people might put uh, Mark here on his 300 wisdom in front of me. Um, I'm not sure why you put it in front of me because... uh, Because you love it as much as I do. Yeah, whatever. But he's got, you know, a ballistic chart taped to the stock. Uh, That's another thing people do, and they'll just tape on different ballistic charts. Uh, Or you may see people sticking stuff in a flip cap. Um, There is the turret option. And so, again, if you really... the, The thing that it really boils down to, in my opinion, is that just understand that if you go the turret route, first off, it's on the shooter to really get good data, mm-hmm. first off. Because we were right. talking about how your data can change at different elevations and stuff. Um, but that is assuming that you also have a good muzzle velocity. Correct. Right. So if you go in and you think to yourself, okay, I'll just grab the muzzle velocity off the back of the box of ammo that I'm shooting. I'll plug it into my calculator. And then I'll just take whatever elevation I got you know, around here. You know, I just kind of checked in a few things and I, I plopped in whatever my ballistics calculator said, and then you spend usually kind of a decent amount of money for a custom turret, mm-hmm. um, then chances are it's not going to be as accurate as you're hoping. you got to yeah. really take the time to get accurate muzzle velocity out of your firearm. you got to take the time to really get all the atmospherics that you're going to be expecting and seeing to get the most mileage out of it, if you will. And uh, so that's where I think we've recommended a lot of times for people who are considering it, you have to do that because of the investment you put into a custom turret versus if, Mark, if you screwed up this chart that you taped onto your stock that's paper, it's like, oh, okay, a piece of paper costs, you know, a penny right. to replace and plus the tape. Or if, uh, you know, in your case, you're using like the label maker tape that you're putting on your turret. Oh, you screwed it up one time, peel you know, whatever, peel it, it off, redo yeah. it. Easy peasy. Well, and the um, versatility of this, right? Like, no question. Like, this is the system. So I've got a, a ballistic chart taped to my stock where I inputted a lot of very specific data. But I also do some some general things with it too. Which I th- mm-hmm. let me ask you this: Would if a person would want to do this with a custom turret, maybe as well? Like, obviously, temperature changes throughout the day, mm-hmm. right? So, like for when I put a temperature in, I generally put fifty degrees because I'm like, okay, it might be eighty but it also might be 30, 30, yep. right? So I kind of find like these middle ground things where like almost like mm-hmm. a, you know, a safe space, Jim. Mm-hmm. But also with this chart, like it's versatile for me because I could be like, oh, I'm in Wisconsin, so I want to do this right now. Like, oh, we're going to Wyoming next week. You know, we're going to be at 10,000 feet, rip it off. I might even be using the exact same load, mm-hmm. right? But I'm going to input some different data points to get a more accurate ballistic chart. Mm-hmm. It does cost you a little bit of time though. Yep. So it's kind of like trade-offs. Right. Another thing, another thing. Hey, let me tell you another thing, Jim. <laughs> uh, <laughs> buckle up. All right. Uh, ballistic, t- you know, like Kenton Industries, like they'll they'll cut like yep. a ballistic turret, which is like essentially a replacement turret for, you know, a specific rifle scope. Yes. I think they also do ballistic tapes, which yep. are uh, somewhat more, uh, I guess, uh, f- you know, temporary, uh, tem- yeah. temporary, but lower, also lower cost. Lower cost, yeah. So you can lower be like, investment. Lower investment, so you can maybe get more of them. Yeah. Um, 
And again, not part, you want to change something that's not, you know, like, oh, I got to get another turret cut. You can be like, yeah, these are a little bit more. The turret tapes are wonderful. And uh, I know Kenton does it, and they do a really good job. There's another company called uh, Custom Turret Systems, I think is the oh, company's uh-huh. name. Yep. They do a really good job. In fact, they even have uh, a few different options, like you can have on the very bottom of the turret tape readout in mills or MOA, whichever you're using, and then the top of the turret tape readout in yards. So let's oh, okay. say that you cross that you know, maybe your your comfort zone is 400 yards for your ballistic dial. Um, you cross over that line and say, well, I'm going to go out to five or 600 yards. I can then plug in my data and dial in minutes of angle or mills. Yeah. Because, oh. yeah, if you ever do want to yeah. dial in mills or MOA and you have a custom turret that's only reading in yardage, you have to be consciously sort of counting clicks exactly. at that point. Yep. And if you got to dial in a fair amount of clicks, Ugh. pay good attention. Right, yeah. So, um, Yeah. But I, I think that's really the point of what we wanted to come in here. It wasn't to poo-hoo custom turrets. Oh, because, not at all. You know, to the to the point of what we were saying earlier, people have been trying to come up with quick ways to reference how much they need to hold over or adjust uh, forever since shooting was invented. And so, um, you know, I mean, you look at uh, you look at old guns from World War II or whatever, and they have that. <laughs> Why they are you that, pointing at my gun when that, you say um, that? Oh, well, I'm sorry, it's just the only gun in front of me. But they have that slider sight, you know, <laughs> where it changes the rear oh, sight right. a little bit, and, and they give a yardage marker on it. We've had BDC reticles, which effectively, yep is doing the same thing because you're raising your barrel to then account for greater bullet drop and shoot at greater distances. BDC reticles, all of the same principles apply. You need to always really get good data and understand how that's lining up uh, with your particular cartridge coming out of your particular gun. So anyway, that's uh, where this boils down. If you have any questions, though. Yes. Always let us know. We got guys like Nick who have been doing this stuff for a long time. Tons of people on the phones here. You can hit us up on social media, email, any of that stuff. So, um, yes. Hopefully this answered some questions, though, maybe. I'm sure it will. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right. We'll catch you next Thanks, time. Nick. Bye.